All right, so we have another anamorphic lens from Siri. This is the 75 millimeter f1.8. And uh, externally, it's pretty much the same thing all over again. It has the same great build quality, the same feel in the hand, the same great manual focus ring, which is not focused by wires, thank goodness. It has a smooth aperture ring and it's f1.8. And it has the 67 millimeter filter thread, which is nice, the most common filter thread you can find. So it's always nice to have that. But of course, I didn't make this video to tell you how good is this lens uh, in terms of build quality. So I'm gonna tell you about the image quality, what you can expect. And is the 75 millimeters practical being an f1.8 and being a manual focus lens? That's a big question I had when I first got this and I think I have the answer right now. So stick around and let's get into it. All right, so first things first. All of the footage I shot for the intro and b-roll was done handheld with the Sony a7S III. And yes, my ass did pick up one as well and a full review is coming soon, so subscribe now if you haven't done that already. And I know some of you will say that the Sony a7S III doesn't have a crop mode, but it does have clear image zoom and that works just fine. But the reason I didn't put the anamorphic lens on my a6500 is that it's just not practical to do that, unless you're on a gimbal or a tripod. Because when you shoot handheld 4K 25fps in a camera body this small, which does have an impressive image stabilization, you will get a ton of micro jitters, which is something that warp stabilizer usually can't fix. And from the experience of using our 85mm lenses, which is pretty much the same focal length, I can say that it is true 99% of the time. So if you're planning to get this lens for your crop sensor camera, keep this in mind. I'm not saying it's not usable at all for handheld, but it's just not safe and although you might look in your camera monitor and say it's fine, once you drop that footage in your editing software and put it full screen, the camera shake will be waiting for you. You. Also, a little pro tip for Sony users. Since this lens doesn't have any electronics and it's fully manual, make sure to set the right focal length for your steady shot, since the camera won't be able to guess it and will most likely just set it to 8mm or whatever. Just set it to 75mm and you will see a big difference. Okay, but how is the image? I did a little wannabe Gerald Undone sharpness test. <laughs> so the lens turned out to be extremely soft on f1.8, tons of chromatic aberration and distortion. I mean, I wouldn't say it's unusable, sometimes I like when my image is a little soft, but of course not all the time. Then on f2 it gets a little better, f2.8 is really good, and then f4 is excellent and clearly the sharpest throughout the whole range. The chromatic aberration is also pretty much gone at this point, and then the sharpness stays pretty much the same throughout the rest of the range. You will only see that it gets a little softer on f16 if you really pixel p but otherwise surprisingly f16 is very sharp and totally usable and i know a lot of beginners make this mistake of shooting f1.8 all the time because bokeh but have you ever tried shooting at f11 or f16 yes you won't get any depth of field but look at that sunburst when shooting at f16 it's beautiful and clearly because of the 13 aperture blades this lens has when it comes to the out of focus elements this lens is an absolute bokeh machine being an anamorphic lens of course you get that signature oval bokeh which which is beautiful and very smooth, again, because of that 13 aperture blades. Other than that, it's pretty much the same thing all over again, just a slightly different focal length, creamier bokeh, and the lens is a little bigger and heavier than all of the previous anamorphic lenses. So the 75 millimeters is the heaviest, which is to be expected at this focal length and being an f1.8. But yeah, so the question is, do I see myself using this lens in the future and who do I recommend it to? I'm asking this because obviously Siri sent us this lens for testing purposes, however, they didn't pay us any money, nor did I get to see this video before we publish it. So all of what I said here is my true honest opinion. Okay, so as a run and gun type of filmmaker, this lens is far from ideal. And it's all due to the manual focus combined with the extremely shallow depth of field. I put this lens on a gimbal and tried to do a follow shot at f1.8 and it was very difficult. As soon as my walking speed it didn't match my beautiful model here, the shot was totally out of focus. And that happened so quick that I couldn't even tell if I need to move closer or further to get back in focus. If the subject is stationary, of course it gets a lot easier, but still might be challenging sometimes. Luckily though, the manual focus ring is very very smooth and has just the right amount of resistance in my opinion. It's so good that I have no problems pulling focus while moving forward with my, with my gimbal or even handheld. But yeah, if you're not used to manual focus lenses, this might get very challenging. However, if you're not a run and gun type of filmmaker, this lens is definitely more practical and a good addition to the other anamorphic lenses. Like as soon as we're going to do another story based short film, I see myself using this lens a lot because with those types of shoots, obviously the time is not that limited. And obviously anamorphic lenses in general are not made with run and gun type of filmmakers in mind. So this lens is more for those who like to work on bigger sets, rig the camera up with follow focus thingies and so on. Alright, so what is the final verdict? 
So first of all, if you want to pick just one anamorphic lens, like if you have the money to pick up just one, I would suggest going with a 35mm lens instead, since that is the most versatile. I think the focal length is fantastic. Uh, and uh, not to say that 75mm is not good, but I think uh, 35 is just a lot more practical because you could be filming portraits, you could be filming landscapes, products, whatever you throw at it, 35mm can handle it. However, with the 75mm, I think it gets a little bit more specific because it's more designed to just separate uh, you know, the subject from the background. So that means that it's good for portraits, for uh, shooting people in general, uh, landscapes as well, but you're not gonna be using it too much for landscapes. It's more for those intimate details and it's more like an extra, but not like the primary lens you would use. All right, but that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next video, which is gonna be the Sony a7S III full review and spoiler alert. I was spending the last month in Dubai and I got that camera there and I have a ton of footage from there to show you and I cannot wait uh, to make that video. So stick around and uh, again, thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button, the like and fucking bell notification, whatever that is. And uh, yeah, see you soon and peace out.